I'm going to make the assumption as you engage with people that have a strong narcissistic bent, you make the attempt to try to bring a healthy attitude or a healthy mannerism with you as you try to engage with these people. And then as you try to bring your common sense and your normal, your norms to that person, you walk away thinking, I don't know what to do with this person because as hard as I try to have a normal, healthy style of engagement with this individual, they just don't get it. They seem to operate with their own standards and preferences, and there's just not a real good sense of blending whatsoever. I want you to understand that when you finally arrive at that conclusion, you're not the crazy person. See, let's keep in mind that when narcissists engage with you, they have to be in the control position and they uh, create their own uh, false uh, reality. They, they want things to be done their way. They have an attitude of entitlement, superiority. They don't empathize with you, so they're not good blenders. And then when there's the predictable strain and difficulty, they want you to think that you're the problem when in fact, I'm going to go back to that phrase, they just don't get it. They operate according to their standards, which are not the norm. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to talk with you about some what we might call off-label indicators of narcissism. And I'm going to go through 10 different narcissistic traits here with you today that are a little bit different than what you'll read in a textbook that indicate that not only are these people uh, ones who don't get it, but they're the ones who are in that high narcissistic uh, uh, mindset to begin with. And as you spot this and see it for what it is, then I'm hoping that you can realize, okay, I I'm not making this stuff up and I am trying to be normal. And even if they want to try to put it all on me in a blame sort of way, I'm not going to bite on that. So let let's go through these 10 indicators that a narcissist, it reveals that a narcissist simply doesn't get it. Now, the first thing that you can see, and I, I'm, I'm going to guess that an extremely high percentage of you would know this one, is these individuals are open to talking about your flaws, but they're closed about talking about their own flaws. Now, you see in normal, healthy relationships, of course, flaws or strains or differences are going to come up, and that's to be expected. And in healthy relationships, it's like, well, let's talk about yours. You can talk about mine. Let's get some feedback from each other, and let's see if we can find some good middle ground to engage with. It's, it's not a shocker that flaws show up, but uh, can we just go ahead and, and make sure that we turn it into a constructive kind of conversation? With the narcissist, there's there's no sense of fair play here. They, they have a deep and pervasive ill logic when it comes to talking about flaws. Uh, now, they can, they can say and do things that are glaringly obvious that are in an inappropriate way, and they'll say, no, you've got it wrong. Now, if you do something anywhere similar to that, it's like, yeah, you're the one with the problem. And uh, they complain about you, but they, won't, they certainly won't hear about anything in reverse. It's one of their primary double standards that they operate with. Now, a second uh, indicator that reveals that they just don't get it is many of these individuals, a high percentage of narcissistic people, operate with a low emotional intelligence in general. Now, when we talk about emotional intelligence, EQ, that's, that's kind of a, an informal way of saying uh, that they're uh, constructive in the way that they manage emotions. If you say something, and, uh, you know, they can pick up on some of the nuances. For example, if you say, uh, boy, did I have a frustrating day uh, yesterday with this person, but you're kind of smiling and there's just kind of a, uh, just sort of a lightness. They, they in emotional intelligence, they can say, oh, so you're about to tell me something funny, aren't you? But sometimes when you talk with narcissists, they don't pick up on subtle cues when it comes to emotion, uh, the emotionality there. They can be tone deaf with respect to what you say and mean on a personal or a sensitive kind of level. And basically, um, the fact that they have low EQ implies, hey, look, I'm, I'm consumed with me and my needs and my interpretations and all, and I don't have time to figure out what's going on inside of you. They, they, don't, they don't want to pick up on subtleties. They don't want to pick up on nuances regarding your emotional disposition. Now, a third reason, uh, way that you can tell that a narcissist just doesn't get it is they're baffled by relationship ambiguity. Now, there's simply time. When I say ambiguity, uh, things that are in flux or uh, a little bit nebulous. For example, there might be some times when you're questioning values or standards or beliefs that you might have held in the past, or even something simple like 
um, entertainment preferences or how you like to do things. I used to do it this way, now I do it that way. And so you're not nailed down in whatever is, uh, is going on between you and that narcissist. It's like, what's this all about? Why are you shifting? Why are you changing? And of course, there are just simply uh, some elements of life where you're not going to be the same uh, every year and every decade. Uh, but the narcissist is thinking, no, I don't want ambiguity. I don't want, uh, let's just wait and see. You have to think like me. And there's a certain way things ought to be. Now, and now if they're shifting and all, that's fine. But they don't want you to shift. They don't want to feel like you're in a, a fluid state of mind. A fourth indicator is narcissists see conflict as a relationship ender. Now, uh, you know and I know that you're going to have conflict. Not only do you see flaws, but you're also going to have conflict uh, between us. And part of a growing relationship says, well, why don't we talk about the things that we're in conflict with so that we can know each other better? And in a mature mindset, Conflict can be a way of, of us you know, getting to the heart of the matter of who we are and how we think and what our needs and desires are. But if you're in conflict with a, a narcissist, it's like, uh, deal over, uh, no way. And, and they're so black and white in the way that they think that they're unable to manage it. And it's like, look, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything mean and harsh. We, we differ here. And it's like, nope, nope. And your response is, you just don't get it, do you? you? You want everything to be your way. And it's not going to be that way. And that's okay. They can't think that way. Number five, um, narcissists are closed to lifelong learning, especially when it comes to personal matters. Now, uh, I'm in my 60s. And one of the things that I've learned being at this stage in my life is, you can look back and think, you know, I didn't, I, I don't think today in the way that I did when I was in my twenties or thirties or forties. Uh, life is all about growth and shifting and maturing, hopefully. And, and so, uh, I want to be a lifelong learner. Uh, whereas when you say, uh, say this, that, that kind of thing to the narcissist, it's like, Hey, look, I already know what I need to know and you don't need to tell me anything new. And they tend to be drawn towards the same old simple minded, uh, uh, activities and people and preferences. And it's like, you're not learning. And it's like, I don't need to learn. This is me. I already know everything. A sixth indicator that narcissists just don't get it is that their emotions are not disciplined. Now, again, I can say as an, a person who's older in life, as opposed to when I was, let's say, a teenager in my 20s, you're, uh, when you're younger, typically your emotions might be a little bit more uh, untamed or you didn't exactly know what to do with it. But over time, you begin to, to learn how to modulate in those kind of things. Uh, whereas with the narcissist, they can be uh, way off base with their emotions in their 20s, 30s, 60s, 90s, I don't know. But, but they just don't learn how to manage their emotions. The emotions will run off with them, whether it's their suppression of emotions, whether it's letting anxiety run away or having the same old anger issues over and over. And basically on the emotional level, uh, the way they engage with you is emotionally, I'm going to wear you out and then I'll just move on. Uh, and so they just simply don't learn how to manage their emotions well. A seventh indicator that these people just don't get it is they, they continue to look at life uh, as a consumer, or I should say they look at relationships as a consumer. And by that, I mean, what are you going to do for me? What are you going to give me? Uh, how can I benefit by being in your presence? And so as long as you give them what they want, we call that narcissistic supply. It's like, okay, you can hang around. It's like, well, what if we came up with a notion that says relationships are not about consumption and what we can get off of one another? Uh, the narcissist is like, no, what's in it for me? And if you give me, keep giving me what I think is in it for me, then we're fine. And it's like, you, you don't get it. Uh, it's much more than that. It's like, no, that's plenty. Okay. Or number eight, uh, an indicator that they don't get it is that these individuals live with a lack of peace. One of the things that I talk about is I, I want to learn how to have a sense of contentment uh, I want to have a sense of gratitude uh, in my life. I want to uh, look at who I am with and what I've accomplished and uh, the people in front of me, who they are and what they've accomplished. 
And I want to just be able to embrace that and say, yeah, this is uh, who we are and this is how we do life. Isn't it good that we can uh, learn how to have some things that bring us that inner sense of calmness? Narcissists are not calm from the inside out. Uh, having that real tight need for control, the only way they have calmness is if everything lines up to what the agenda says. Now, number nine that indicates they just don't get it is they're numb to the pain or the hurt that they generate in other individuals. You know, there are times when they can be mean or caustic or uncaring or rude or dismissive. And then if you try to call them out on it, it's like, what's the deal with you? And when you say, well, there, there's some things here that aren't working. Well, then you're just too thin skinned. You're, you're just too sensitive. And they don't really care about what kind of pain they have. They, they don't want to ask, well, what is it that you'd like me to learn? Because that would be way too much for them. That's just way out of their realm. Uh, first of all, they're going to think, well, if you have pain, I didn't create it. Second, if you do have pain, you deserve it anyway. You probably brought it onto yourself. And so th they're not comfortable in uh, uh, discussing things on that level. And then finally, this is the 10th indicator that says they, they, they just don't get it. They live with a fear of being irrelevant. Uh, they've got to be the, the major player on the stage, even if covert narcissists in their own passive way, but certainly the, uh, the outlandish narcissist, uh, they, they don't want to be known as irrelevant. And we can uh, approach that notion by saying, this is not about who's more relevant than others. Uh, why don't we just learn to blend? Why don't we learn to pull our thoughts and feelings and experiences together and say, all of us have a relevance that we bring. And their thinking is, no, the only relevant person in this equation has to be me. I don't care what the rest of you think. Now, I go back to my opening comments. You want to approach these people by saying, hey, there's a, there's a good normative way that we can do this. And then it's like, you're not catching on, are you? And, and you can talk to with these individuals until you're blue in the face and it still isn't going to make a difference. So let's go with this thought. It, it's gonna be most important for you to know that when they try to make you out to be the problematic person here, un, just uh, take a look at your truth Take a look at who you are and what you stand for, and then take a look at where they're coming from and make your judgments based on that as opposed to their simple pronouncements. And then I'm hoping you can be a person that says, well, even if they are not able to join me, if they just don't get it, I get it. And I want to live life in a clean and healthy way. And if I have to remove myself from folks that don't know how to deal with me, so be it. I want to, I want to hang out with people that are over here on Team Healthy. That's what I stand for. Now, I do hope that videos such as this give you a good idea of what you're uh, what we're looking at when we talk about this subject of narcissism. And uh, as you can see, that's a it's a very broad subject. We could learn a lot. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so, so we can keep more learning videos coming your way. It could be that you're in a position where uh, you could use some counseling. And if there are some counselors in your general area that you could avail yourself to, I would encourage you to seek that out. If you don't have that availability or if you'd like to look at uh, online counseling, we vetted a group. We have a link below that would uh, allow you to uh, seek that out. And I would encourage you to do so if that's something you would look at. Uh, look out for our new, um, I, I've got my own, uh, my, my new free to be uh, video workshop. It's, it's very exciting. We have a link below that will uh, take you to that. We have other uh, video workshops. We have links to my books and uh, we have an email list and things of that nature. Lots of th uh, things underneath there. And in addition, we have our survivingnarcissism.tv and drlescarter.com websites. Lots of resources. I do hope that you're somebody that gets it and you live according to healthy and clean initiatives. That being the case, I'm hoping you can be steady, calm, and confident. And then when the narcissist comes along and says, I'm going to trip you up, it's like, nope, you don't get it. I'm going to live as a person who lives with, a, with my own uh, well-conceived notions leading the way. That's what I do.